Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Quality Measurement and Improvement. This is Lecture B. The component, the Culture of Healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings. It discusses how care is organized within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for quality measurement and improvement are to define healthcare quality and the major types of quality measures, structural, process, and outcome measures. Describe the current state of healthcare quality in the United States. Discuss quality measures used in various healthcare settings in the United States, including those required for the High Tech or Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act Meaningful Use Program. Describe the role of information technology in measuring and improving healthcare quality and describe the results of current healthcare quality efforts in the United States. This lecture examines quality measures that are currently used under the Meaningful Use Requirements of the Health Information and Technology, or High Tech, Act. A sampling of current quality programs and measures in use appears on the screen. Berwick has noted that we are early in the science of quality improvement. What exactly is that science? An Institute of Medicine report describes the science behind healthcare quality assessment. Many measures have been developed, all reflecting different perspectives, somewhat like standards. The Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, or AHRQ, maintains a clearinghouse of the different types of measures that are available, where they are being used, and so forth. But there's clearly a growing consensus that we need to develop standardized sets so that we can implement them in standardized ways and obtain value from them. In the following slides, we talk about specific quality measures from different perspectives, the perspectives of health plans, outpatient medicine, and inpatient medicine, and we look at the quality measures required under the Meaningful Use Rules of the High Tech Act. The first topic is health plans. Why health plans? Health plans have a historic role. They were among the first to measure quality, at least as process measures, and to act on the findings. They should be noted and commended for being pioneers in this area. And in fact, there's a healthcare quality measurement set called HEDIS, the Health Plan Employer Data and Information Set, developed by NCQA, the National Committee for Quality Assurance. HEDIS has 60 measures that are mainly healthcare process measures used to evaluate health plans and particularly health maintenance organizations. Quote, these measures address a range of health issues, including asthma medication use, persistence of beta blocker treatment after a heart attack, controlling high blood pressure, comprehensive diabetes care, breast cancer screening, antidepressant medication management, immunization status, and advising smokers to quit. HEDIS is used by more than 90% of America's health plans. End quote. The NCQA reports, which were covered in the previous lecture, calculate lives saved based on outcomes that occur from adherence to these process measures. For a more detailed review, HEDIS has a number of categories and specific measures within those categories. One category includes effectiveness of care measures, such as childhood and adult immunization, use of beta blockers after myocardial infarction, or MI, screening for various types of cancer, and a number of measures related to chronic diabetes care. Another category includes measures on access and availability to care, such as access to preventive health measures, how available primary care providers are, and how soon prenatal care is initiated. HEDIS also has measures related to satisfaction with care, including member satisfaction surveys and the use of various services such as preventive measures. These measures allow health plans to compare themselves to other health plans. What about quality reporting in the outpatient setting? In the United States, efforts in this setting are led by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, mostly in the Medicare program. The major CMS program is the Physician Quality Reporting System, or PQRS, which was formerly called Physician Quality Reporting Initiative. The program initially provided physicians participating in Medicare an extra 1% reimbursement for reporting on a large number of measures, a total of 194 in 2011. 
They also received 0.5% for maintenance of certification in their medical specialty. Starting in 2015, the bonus changed to reduce payments for participants who did not meet specified objectives. Another CMS program was the Electronic Prescribing, or ERX, incentive program. This program initially provided an additional extra 1% reimbursement for use of e-prescribing. In 2012, the bonus incentive period expired and payment reductions began for participants who did not meet specified objectives. PQRS enables healthcare professionals to measure, for example, the following conditions. For diabetes mellitus, the quality measure is the percentage of patients aged 18 to 75 years with diabetes mellitus whose most recent blood test showed a hemoglobin A1c level greater than 9.0%. For patients undergoing resection for lung or esophageal cancer and requiring thoracic surgery, the measure is the percentage of surgical patients aged 18 years and older who had clinical TNM staging prior to surgery. TNM stands for tumor, node, metastases, and TNM staging determines the extent of cancer in the patient's body. For weight assessment and counseling for children and adolescents, the quality measurement is the percentage of children aged 2 to 18 years whose weight is classified on a BMI or body mass index percentile for age and gender. There are also quality measures for inpatient settings. Much of this activity is overseen by an organization, actually a collaboration of organizations, called the Hospital Quality Alliance, or HQA. The HQA includes the CMS, the Joint Commission, and others who have created a starter set of quality measures for various conditions initially focused in core areas, such as acute myocardial infarction, heart failure, pneumonia, and hip knee replacement. The Hospital Compare Project is a voluntary program that publishes on a website the quality measures submitted by various organizations so that individuals can compare reporting hospitals with regard to these quality measures. The HQA project consists of two programs based on reporting that is done to CMS. One part is the Inpatient Quality Reporting, or IQR, which is for the HQA data in the core areas and hospitals that don't participate actually have a 2% reduction in their Medicare reimbursement. There's another collection of information that doesn't measure process quality, but patient satisfaction. This is the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers, or HCAPS, a measure of patient satisfaction that is also reported as part of the Hospital Compare project. Here are the HQA categories and some examples of the measures. The broad categories are myocardial infarction, heart failure, pneumonia, surgical infection prevention, and children's asthma care. Within these categories are a variety of mainly process measures. These are the quality measures that are reported to HQA and posted on the Hospital Compare website. Among the measures for myocardial infarction are actions such as aspirin given upon arrival at the hospital, when the diagnosis is made and when the patient is discharged, as well as inpatient mortality. For heart failure, the provision of discharge instructions and the evaluation of the patient's left ventricular systolic function are measures. For pneumonia, the measures include time to blood culture positivity and antibiotics as well as vaccinations for pneumococcus and influenza. For surgical infection prevention, the measures look at prophylactic antibiotics as well as prophylaxis for deep venous thrombosis. For childhood asthma, the measures are the need for reliever medication while hospitalized and the development of a home management plan of care document. Some quality initiatives in the inpatient setting aren't tied into the U.S. government and Medicare reimbursement. A long-standing, ongoing project is the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program, or NISQIP. This effort is led mainly by the American College of Surgeons to measure, risk-adjust, and improve the quality of surgical care. For organizations that are academic medical centers, there's the University Health System Consortium, or UHC. The focus of UHC is on quality measurements for benchmarking academic medical centers. 
Data is provided to UAC and reports are returned to each organization. Viewers of this training may be part of these organizations and therefore familiar with the green and red dots. Anywhere from one half to one or two of each of these dots represents positive deviation or negative deviation from the standard of quality. High Tech's meaningful use rules were predicated on five healthcare goals for the United States. One of these goals is improving quality, safety, and efficiency with core measures for both eligible professionals and eligible hospitals. The ultimate goal was that, quote, meaningful use compliance will result in better clinical outcomes, improved population health outcomes, increased transparency and efficiency, empowered individuals, and more robust research data on health systems, end quote. Eligible professionals or providers could participate in the Meaningful Use Program for either Medicare or Medicaid patients, but not both. Medicare is the federal health insurance program for people who are 65 or older, certain younger people with disabilities, and people with end-stage renal disease, permanent kidney failure requiring dialysis or a transplant. Medicaid is a joint federal and state program that helps low-income individuals or families pay for the costs associated with long-term medical and custodial care, provided they qualify. Medicaid is run by the state, and coverage may vary from one state to another. The Meaningful Use Framework provided a platform for these objectives to evolve over a period of years through a series of stages. Meaningful Use was deployed in 2010, and objectives shifted as the program continued. There is ongoing discussion regarding implementation of new measures, and there have been discussions about discontinuing the Meaningful Use Program, particularly in light of the advent of MACRA, which is discussed later in this lecture. Under Meaningful Use, eligible providers and hospitals have been required to report Clinical Quality Measures, or CQM, selected by CMS for using certified EHR technology in order to successfully participate in the Medicare and Medicaid EHR incentive programs. The CMS website provides detailed information about requirements for meaningful use stages and the reporting time schedule that providers must follow, which is based on the stage they are reporting on. Also, providers must use the specified release of their certified EHR system that corresponds to the stage for which they are reporting. The EHR certification program has been regulated in conjunction with the Meaningful Use program. The following slides summarize the CQM measurement reporting requirement options. Eligible professionals demonstrating 2016 CQMs were required to report on 10 objectives, and eligible hospitals were required to report on nine objectives. Both groups have the same objectives, except that physicians also have an objective about secure messaging. The measures for each objective are similar, except for situations that relate specifically to physicians or to hospitals. For example, objective one for both professionals and hospitals is protect patient health information, and the measurement that they must meet is to conduct or review a security risk analysis. Objective two for both professionals and hospitals is clinical decision support. Measure one is implement five clinical decision support interventions related to high priority health conditions. Measure two is enable and implement functionality for drug-drug and drug allergy interaction checks for the entire reporting period. However, physicians who write fewer than 100 medication orders during the reporting period are exempt from Measure 2. The 2016 list of CQM measures for eligible professionals or physicians is located at www.cms.gov slash regulations dash and dash guidance slash legislation slash EHR incentive programs slash downloads slash 2016 underscore EP what you need to know for 2016 dot PDF. The 2016 list of CQM measures for eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals is located at www.cms.gov regulations dash and dash guidance 
slash legislation slash EHR incentive programs slash downloads slash 2016 underscore EH what you need to know for 2016 dot PDF. You will see that the CQM measures on both websites are linked to NQF quality measures. The list of all CQMs for both eligible professionals and eligible hospitals is too long to display for this lecture, but this slide provides one example of the measures used in the program. This measure for eligible professionals focuses on children with pharyngitis, or sore throat. You can see that the quality measure is identified with the CMS e-measure identification number and the NQF number. This measure represents one of six NQS domains, specifically the efficient use of healthcare resources, which is required in later stages of the meaningful use criteria. The NCQA is identified as the steward of this specific measure, which includes oversight of the official measure description and the required measurement, numerator and denominator statement. This example illustrates how individual quality measures in the Meaningful Use program are now identified and aligned across multiple quality measure programs. The official description is to measure the percentage of children 2 to 18 years of age who were diagnosed with pharyngitis, ordered an antibiotic, and received a Group A streptococcus test for the episode. The numerator statement, or data collected, is the number of children with a Group A streptococcus test in the seven-day period from three days prior through three days after the diagnosis of pharyngitis. The denominator statement, or the data collected, is the number of children ages 2 to 18 years who had an outpatient or emergency department visit with a diagnosis of pharyngitis during the measurement period and an antibiotic ordered within three days after the visit. This slide provides an example of a quality measure for eligible hospitals. This measure focuses on the use of antithrombotic therapy prescribed at discharge for ischemic stroke level 2 patients, or stroke patients prescribed medication to prevent blood clots. As with the example for eligible professionals, this description includes identifiers for this measure used in other quality measure programs. The CMS e-measure, NQF number, and version number are identified. The Joint Commission is the designated steward for this measure, which is aligned with the NQS priority of clinical process and effectiveness. The formal description is ischemic stroke, patients prescribed antithrombotic therapy at hospital discharge. The numerator of the quality measure is the total number of stroke patients who are prescribed antithrombotic therapy at hospitals. The denominator is the total number of ischemic stroke patients. The Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act of 2015, or MACRA, is a payment reform regulation that changes how Medicare reimburses providers for the care they provide to Medicare patients. It includes a new framework for rewarding health care providers for giving better care, not just more care, and for combining existing quality reporting programs into one new system. MACRA supports the goal of paying for value and better care, which is the same goal of many other programs, including meaningful use and quality measure programs. The goal of MACRA is to make it easier for providers to participate in federal quality programs through participation in either the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, MIPS, or the Alternative Payment Models, APMs. The MIPS program combines part of the PQRS, the Value Modifier, or Value-Based Payment Modifier, and the Medicare EHR Incentive Program, or Meaningful Use, into a single program based on quality, resource use, clinical practice improvement, and meaningful use of certified EHR technology. The APM program provides new ways to reimburse providers for the care provided to Medicare patients. Examples include payment of a lump sum incentive payment from 2019 to 2024 to some providers, increased transparency of physician-focused payment models, offer of higher annual payments to some providers beginning in 2026, Examples of organizations or care delivery models that are considered participants in the APM program include accountable care organizations, patient-centered medical homes, 
and bundled payment models. MIPS and APM's implementation is through a phased process based on specific timelines that began in 2015 and will continue through 2021 and beyond. The traditional fee-for-service reimbursement model is targeted to be phased out by 2020 for Medicare patients, leaving MIPS and certified APM participants as the new Medicare reimbursement models. This concludes Lecture B of Quality Measurement and Improvement. This lecture discussed many different healthcare quality measures that are used in a variety of settings, from health plans to inpatient to outpatient. Health plans most commonly assess quality using the HEDIS measures of NCQA. Outpatient settings most often use measures in the PQRS program. Inpatient settings have a variety of measures, but most commonly used are those of the HQA. One of the core meaningful use criteria for eligible professionals and eligible hospitals is a series of quality measures.